Hey, my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Motor. You probably heard about the importance of dimensional modeling in modern data platform solutions, but maybe you didn't have a chance to learn more about it. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to the basic concepts of dimensional modeling, such as star schema, snowflake schema, slowly changing dimensions, surrogate and business keys, and many, many more. This knowledge may help you to build more robust and scalable solutions for your data engineering projects. This video is part of the DP700 Fabric Data Engineering Learning Series. Stay tuned! Before we come up to explain why dimensional modeling is named like that, dimensional, let's first take a brief tour through some history lessons. In 1996, a man called Ralph Kimball, together with Margie Ross and his team, published a book The Data Warehouse Toolkit which is still considered a dimensional modeling bible. In this book, Kimball introduced a completely new approach to modeling data for analytical workloads, the so-called bottom-up approach. The focus is on identifying key business processes within the organization and modeling these first, before introducing additional business processes. Kimball's approach is fairly simple and consists of four steps also known as the four-step dimensional design process. Each step is based on a decision. It starts with selecting the business process. Let's use the example that we are selling a ticket for a sports event and this is our business process. The next step is to declare the grain. Grain? What on earth is grain? Simply said, that is the lowest level of detail captured by the business process. In our example, the lowest level of detail is the individual ticket sale. We will come up later to explain why choosing the right grain is of paramount importance in dimensional modeling. At this moment, it's just important to remember that grain refers to the lowest level of detail captured by the business process. Once you declare the grain, the next step is to identify dimensions. Let's forget about this name dimension for a second and try to explain what dimension really is. It's a special type of a table that I like to think of as a lookup table. You know, if you need more descriptive information about a certain object, that's what you'll find in the lookup table. Oops, I mean in the dimension table. Think of a person and its description. How would you describe a specific person? By name, for sure. Then by gender, age, physical and email address, and probably phone number too. Or product. The product probably has a name, belongs to a specific category and has a specific color or size. Dimension tables usually answer the question starting with W. Who, what, when, where, why. Back to our example, when did we sell a ticket? Where did we sell the ticket? What type of ticket did we sell? And so on. This is a typical structure of a dimension table. It consists of a primary key that uniquely identifies each record in a table, and one or more, usually many more than one, attributes that describe each instance of the business object or process. In this example, we have various attributes, such as the first name, last name, email and phone number, that describe customers in the table. The last step in this four-step dimensional design process is identifying the facts. If we think of a dimension as a lookup table, a fact table is the fact that stores the data about events, something that happened as a result of the business process. In most cases, but not always, these events are represented with numeric values. How many tickets did we sell? How much revenue did we make? And so on. And here is the common structure of the fact table. There are multiple key columns, which we are referring to as foreign keys to dimension tables. In this case, a date, customer ID and product ID, and one or more measurements, such as the sales amount in this example. Before we move on to explain different physical implementations of dimensional modeling, let's quickly reiterate the key benefits of building a dimensional model for business intelligence scenarios. User-friendly data navigation. As users, we often get it easier when thinking about the business process in terms of the subjects that are part of the process. Which event sold the most tickets in the second quarter of the last year? How many tickets were bought by female customers for the Champions League final game? 
Which employee in the USA sold the most VIP tickets for the Super Bowl in 2022? And many more, of course. Performance. As you've already learned, all up systems are designed to support quick and efficient data read operations, which usually means fewer joints between tables. That's exactly what dimensional modeling provides through star schema design, and we'll go into more details about it in the next section. Flexibility. This is one of the key advantages of a dimensional model. Did your customer change the address? Did your employee change position within the organization? No worries, as all these challenges can be easily handled within the model by using a technique called slowly changing dimension, which we will introduce in a few moments. Let's now introduce one of the key concepts in dimensional modeling called a slowly changing dimension. This concept determines how you handle changes to the dimension attributes. The ultimate goal is to allow end users to analyze changes over time and perform point-in-time analysis. These changes may include attributes such as customer address, product price, employee position and similar. There are 8 slowly changing dimension types, although not all of them are commonly used. The most commonly used type is type 2, which assumes adding a new row to the dimension table whenever the attribute value changes. Let's illustrate this with a simple example. This is one of customers, Jerry. Hi Jerry! Jerry was born in California in 1995. So if we want to store the data about Jerry in the table, this is how we are going to do it. Jerry has been located in California from the day he was born and is currently located there, which is implemented through the null value for the date in the valid2 column. Now, let's imagine that Jerry moved to New York for college in 2020. Here is how we are going to capture this information in a slowly changing dimension type 2 table. We will add a new row for Jerry, setting the valid from value to the date when Jerry moved to New York, while at the same time setting the date value to a valid 2 field for the California record. What happens if Jerry decides to move back to California in 2025? No problem at all! We are simply adding a new record, and since January 1st, 2025, Jerry lives in California again, while New York record has been updated to reflect the change. Why is this important? Well, imagine that we are analyzing the sales revenue per location in the year. If we analyze the data for the year 2021, Jerry's revenue should be allocated to New York as a location, right? But what would have happened if we simply overrode Jerry's location in the existing first row, instead of adding new rows for each change? Yes, we would have lost historical track of changes and Jerry's revenue for the year 2021 would have been allocated to California. That's why the concept of slowly changing dimension is of paramount importance. Another crucial concept to understand is the difference between the surrogate and natural keys. Please bear in mind that the natural key is sometimes also referred to as a business key. Let's first explain surrogate keys. These are artificially generated values that serve as unique identifiers in database systems. They don't have any business meaning, as usually surrogate keys are represented either as integer values starting from 1 and then sequentially increasing, like 1 to 3 and so forth, or GUIDs which are special data types generated and managed by the database system itself. On the flip side, a natural or business key represents a unique attribute or set of attributes that exists in the data. Unlike surrogate key, which doesn't have any business meaning, natural key has business meaning, and it's usually a customer key, product code or similar. Let's try to illustrate the difference between the two in a very basic example. I'll use a toy box to explain the difference. Imagine you have a big toy box with lots of toys. Sometimes toys look very similar, like two identical teddy bears. So you put a special sticker on each toy with a unique number. This sticker is your surrogate key. It's a special code that makes each toy completely unique, even if they look exactly the same. It's like a library card number for each toy that is always unique and helps the computer keep track of things easily. No one else gets this exact number, and it doesn't change, even if the toy's details change. 
Now think of the natural key. This is the original tag that came with, the, came with the toy, like its name or description. For a teddy bear, it might be brown soft teddy. Sometimes it can be the same for multiple toys and it represents what humans naturally use to identify something. This tag might change or be similar to other items. In our example, let's say you have two teddy bears. Both are brown and soft. For surrogate key, we will assign the value so that teddy1 gets 001 and teddy2 gets 002. For natural key, both might be brown soft teddy. The surrogate key ensures the computer knows these are two different toys, even though their description is the same. If you find yourself surrounded by experienced data modelers, you'll probably hear them talking about stars and snowflakes. Don't worry, they haven't become astrologists or nature researchers all of a sudden. Star and snowflake schema are probably the most influential concepts in the world of dimensional modeling. Let's first try to explain the star schema. Don't forget, according to Kimball, each piece of data should be classified either as what, when, where, who, why, or as how much or how many. So in a well-designed dimensional model, you should have a central table containing all the measurements and events. This is a fact table, surrounded by lookup tables, which we refer to as dimensions. The fact table and dimension tables are connected via relationships established between the primary key from the dimension table and the foreign key from the fact table. If you take a look at the following illustration, you'll understand why this data modeling design pattern is called star schema. Star schema is a de facto standard for modeling data in enterprise data warehousing systems because it enables efficient querying of huge amounts of data, fast aggregations and intuitive data filtering. Although there are many ongoing debates questioning the star schema relevance for modern data platform solutions because of its age, it is fair to say that this concept is still absolutely relevant and definitely most widely adopted when it comes to designing efficient and scalable business intelligence systems. Snowflake schema is a very similar to star schema. Conceptually, there is no difference between the star and snowflake. In both cases, you'll place your who, what, when, where and why into dimension tables while keeping your how much and how many in the fact table. The only difference is that in the snowflake schema, dimensions are normalized and broken down into sub-dimensions as you may see in the following illustration, which is why it resembles a snowflake. The main motivation for normalizing dimensions is to remove the data redundancy from the dimension table. Although this might sound like a desirable approach, normalizing dimensions comes with some serious considerations. The overall data model structure becomes more complex. Performance may suffer because of the joints between normalized dimension tables. That's all folks, if you like this video please make sure to click this like button down below. Also if you want to stay up to date with all the latest features and innovations in Microsoft Fabric and Power BI, make sure to subscribe to Data Mozart YouTube channel. See you soon!